Growing up, there were rocks everywhere. Now, I grew up in upstate New York where the whole region was formed by glaciers that receded, I don't know, tens of thousands of years ago. And in its wake, it left boulders, it left rocks of all shapes and sizes. And so growing up, there were rocks to play with and around everywhere. But in addition, I knew that rocks could hurt. You see, we had this stream running through our backyard and up against the edges of that stream were these giant boulders. And we would love to swim and play and look for crayfish in that stream, but you had to be real careful because if you slipped on those rocks, you would be hurt for sure. And the other kind of rocks that we had that would hurt was we had these rocks against the pond that I grew up next to that were about this big or so. And around the outside of the pond were these rocks because it kept down the weeds and it kept the bank up against the, ro uh, the, the pond. And one summer, my brother and some friends and I decided that it'd be really fun to see if we could throw rocks at each other. Now, as adults, we know that that was probably not a good idea, but that summer we all learned that yes, indeed, we could throw rocks across the entire pond. And we also learned that ducking underwater did not stop a hurtling rock from hitting you. We learned that lesson. So these rocks are good for all kinds of things. And scripture reminds us that there are two kinds of rocks. There are good rocks, like this one for skipping. This one would be a great one for skipping. And we think of that scripture, the comforting words of Psalm 33, that God is our rock and our refuge. God is strong. God is stable. God protects us. And that's why that image of God as a rock is so good. And then there is the ax and Stephen side of rocks, where a rock can be used as a weapon. Now, there are two sides. And how true is it that there are two sides to most things, aren't there? In this safer at home time, I am struck about how there are both positives and drawbacks to this time. I mean, this time has forced us all to slow down. It's allowed us to take some deep breaths because we're not rushing here and there because there's no here and there to go to. It's allowed us to spend some time connecting intentionally, both with those that we are housed with, maybe if you've got family with you, but also it allows us to intentionally connect by phone, by text, by Zoom, by FaceTime, by video chat, by whatever means we can with those that are near and far. And so that's the good side. The downside is that we're really isolated. Often we're lonely. We're frustrated because there's things we're missing out on. There's grief about things that we had hoped to do but are not able to do. We know that this is a day that we would normally gather at church, Mother's Day. And the church has this great tradition of passing out flowers. Flowers to everyone who is a mother, everyone who has been mothered. And so all of us would get a flower. We're not together to do that and there is grief around that. Two sides. Sometimes we focus too much on one side or the other and we lose sight of the other side, whatever that is. But it's important that we remind ourselves that there is almost always a flip side. Whether we ourselves can experience and imagine that flip side, it's important to remember that even if we don't know about that flip side, others likely do. So while we might only see the beauty of rocks, we must not forget that rocks and that people have the capacity to hurt. And we have to take care not to participate in that hurt or not to stand by silently while hurt is happening. And imagine with me that it's not always hurt by the hands of rocks, 
but hurt in general, right? Our words hurt, our actions hurt. We might not have the capacity to see the hurting side of rocks because we're so focused on the good. But we might only see the pain because we're so focused on our own pain. And then we have to remind ourselves that there's beauty, there's enduring presence to a rock. Friends, these rocks of all different shapes, different sizes, different colors, they remind us that nothing is straightforward. Nothing except God. God is always love. There's no flip side to that. God is always present. God is always with us. There's no flip side. There's no dark side to God. That is the good news. That is what we can cling to. Now, sometimes if you have been coming to UCUC for worship for a long time, I have given out rocks. And I have given you rocks that have been sitting in the baptismal waters. I've given rocks that have been sitting on the front table as decoration. And I've given you a message with these rocks. Often I've told you to put it in your pocket, to remember God's strength, to remember God's love, to remember God's presence. And so I invite you in your walk, in your yard or wherever, to find a rock. Now these rocks have not been sitting at church. They're ones that you're gonna find. But I invite you to find one, a small one, not, not a big one, small one. And I invite you to sit at some place. Maybe that is your pocket. Maybe it's by your bathroom sink or your kitchen sink, but sit at some place to remind you that we are connected, that our God's love connects us when we are safer at home, and that God's love endures as long as a rock and longer. Thanks be to God. Amen.